And we'll get started here. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Louise Gale. I'm a workforce consultant for Alberta Labor and Immigration. Uh, I just wanted to let you know uh, my role is to support business across the region. I work with Jasper, Hinton, and Edson. And in that role of supporting, um, we have business support network meetings and we do these kind of things to help you. So um, that's how this all began. During this presentation, you will be muted and uh, we won't be seeing your uh, video. We will be recording this event, so you will be able to see it later. We'll also be able to share with people uh, that weren't able to make it. And what we're gonna do is begin by having each one of our mayors um, say hello. And then uh, we will have Nancy from Community Futures. Nancy Robbins will be our mo moderator and will read out the questions for us. Good thing I'm not already stumbling. Um, as we get going here, you'll see on the bottom of your screen, the chat box, if you just run your mouse over, You'll see um, the chat. You're able to type into the chat at any time. So if you start having things you'd like to share, you don't have to wait till we ask for it to provide that um, responses back. And with that, I'm going to mute and ask uh, Mayor Ireland if he would please start us off. Thank you, uh, Louise. Uh, welcome to my fellow panelists and welcome to all of those participating out there in, in Zoom land. I've gone through the participants list. It looks like we have about 60 participants logged in right now and that's, that is really great. Um, this from our perspective, that is the perspective of the four mayors who are here, um, is that this is essentially a listening brief our opportunity to hear from you um, with respect to the questions that have been posed and any other information that you might offer to us in this venue. Um, like all things COVID related, um, this will unfurl in phases or stages. Um, so this is phase one of our listening effort. Um, it will be followed by at least a phase two and maybe a phase three. That is, uh, I anticipate that the mayors will get together and debrief at a later time what we've heard today and then we will discuss strategies to, to move forward in unison um, to get our communities and our region the help that it's going to need as we continue through the stages of recovery. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you and uh, hearing what the other mayors may have to contribute to issues in their community. So thank you all. Um, let's get going. Jim, if I could ask you to uh, please say hello. Thank you, Louise. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank all the businesses and uh, my four uh, fellow mayors here for uh, Hinton, Jasper, uh, and uh, Edson for participating in this. I'm, I'm hoping that we get a good cross-section of businesses coming forward today and uh, giving us their insight on how they're coping there during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. As Mayor Allen said, it's, this is an information gathering session, but it's very important for us as mayors uh, throughout the area so that we get good feedback so that we can go th forward to uh, our senior government to uh, get them to work with us and with the community to uh, make things better. I, I just, I want to give a hands out to a couple businesses. Uh, just last week, I uh, was listening on the radio where uh, AFD Petroleum uh, joined forces with Opa's uh, Bake Shop in Hinton. They were giving uh, sandwiches and food out to the local truckers. And it's so important. We sometimes forget about those people that are delivering food and goods across Canada. And then the other day, I, I just uh, was reading their uh, Rocky Mountain Bighorn Distillery. have gone from uh, distilling liquor to making uh, hand cleanser. And it's so great to see businesses diversifying and coping with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'd just like hands out to those and any other businesses that I'm missing. Great job. If we all stick together, we can get through this. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Kevin, can I get you to go next for us? Uh, yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Louise. It's uh, great to be here with uh, our regional partners uh, throughout uh, West Chilhead. 
Um, I think it's really important that we're always uh, working together, uh, especially in circumstances such as this. Many of our communities are connected uh, with what's going on right now with COVID-19. Obviously, Jasper has been impacted, but that also impacts Hinton and Edson as we see a lot of that tourist traffic uh, through our community as well. Um, I know this has been an incredibly difficult time for local business owners. Um, we are seeing the easing of restrictions. There's lots of questions. I've uh, received a number of calls already. Um, so I think this forum is really important to, to hear from business owners what their questions are, what their concerns are, and how we can all work together on all levels of government in order to support uh, recovery efforts. Uh, we are not only uh, fighting what's going on with COVID-19, but we also have a fallout of uh, natural gas and uh, oil prices uh, here in West Yellowhead as well, which is going to have some impacts. And our council is uh, very engaged. We've set aside some funds to help with recovery, approximately $1.3 million uh, that uh, we'll be able to use in the future, as well as uh, we've uh, instituted a tax reduction of about 5%. So that should certainly help businesses out. I think about 451000 is going back uh, into the uh, uh, commercial sector of Edson. And, uh, Hopefully uh, those uh, uh, programs, along with the programs the federal and the provincial governments have in place will, will assist in recovery efforts. Uh, so I look forward to the dialogue today and uh, thank you to West Yellow Community Futures as well as Alberta Labor, uh, our local chamber of commerce uh, throughout the region for getting the word out as well as I would like to thank uh, Town of Medicine staff who are providing the technical assistance uh, to make this happen today. Perfect, thank you Kevin and Marcel. Uh, thanks so much. First, uh, first and foremost, thank you, Louise, uh, for doing this. Your BSNs are awesome. So, uh, again, this is another venue uh, to hear from uh, businesses uh, in all of our communities. Uh, thank you to Nancy Robbins for uh, moderating it. Uh, really appreciate your work there. Uh, honestly, not much to add from the three um, other mayors. Uh, the idea here, let's be honest, our country has never... Uh, been prepared for this. Uh, we've seen stuff like this in movies, uh, and it's like, okay, now the economy has stopped. We don't really have a plan. There was no real plan, and, and not to be critical, uh, and a lot of things have been decided in the last four to six weeks. Now, today's opportunity is to say, has everything been covered? Where are the cracks? What are you experiencing, whether it's uh, rent subsidies, uh, deferral and taxes from municipalities, and this goes to all levels of government, so we can make sure that, okay, the plan that's been put together in many different ways has or has not covered everything. So please, I urge everyone to share your experiences, your thoughts, what's lacking, what's great, uh, so we have a better idea to really uh, put a final stamp, ideally, in the next uh, you know few months and make sure that no one has, is left behind. So again, thank you for uh, taking... Uh, uh, it's time in your, your busy day coping with COVID to uh, in, inform us in, in, in uh, building a path together for uh, uh, hopefully uh, some great successes. So I'm just excited to hear the, uh, your comments. Thanks. Well, thank you, mayors, for that. And I too would like to thank Nancy Robin so much for agreeing to do this with me. And uh, the Chamber of Hinton took the lead in doing our registrations. We greatly appreciate that. But I would be lost without the town of Edson and our supports there, just absolutely wonderful. So thank you, Steve, for being there for us. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nancy to uh, introduce herself, tell us about the great stuff that Community Futures does in our region. And uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks, Louise, and thank you to all the mayors for participating today. Uh, the way this is going to work is that uh, if you are a business and you have a question for a particular mayor, if you could please type it in the chat box, which you will see at the bottom of your screen, there'll be a chat bubble. If you have a particular question for a particular mayor, can you please uh, make sure you state in that question which mayor you wish to ask that question of? And at the, while you're doing that and thinking about putting your questions in there, I just want to manage expectations a little bit and realize, tell everybody we only have 90 minutes. Uh, we won't get to every question. Uh, however, uh, I will make sure that I leave my email address and phone number at the end so you can call me and I will make up the appropriate uh, referral to you and try to find out the information if we don't get to you. 
So while you're thinking about your question and maybe typing it in to the chat box below, I'm going to talk a little bit about Community Futures West Shallowhead. We're a business support organization that's federally funded. We work in Jasper, Hinton, Edson, Grand Cache, and Yellowhead County. So I uh, answer to the municipal councils, four of which the mayors are present today. And we're funded by the Government of Canada through Western Economic Diversification. Uh, we are working right now on recovery products. Uh, like you, we did not expect the recovery and the relaunch strategy to come out of the government of Alberta so quickly as it did on Friday. And so we're scrambling to get ready for that, just like you are. And so hopefully um, we'll be able to talk a little bit about that today as well, if we have time through our mayors. Um, the goal today is to better understand what is working for you and what is not working what innovations you have adapted for your own business, and what supports you still require from the various level of governments. The goal today is for the mayors to share information and innovations within our region and to advocate for other levels of government to better address and voice your needs. Whether your challenges are similar to others or unique to our, the, your business, our duty today is to listen to what you have to say. So, while I'm waiting for questions to show up in the chat box, I am going to get each mayor to talk about a little bit about the positives that they're seeing in the community and what they are, uh, what is working well during this time. So I will start with uh, Edson, with Mayor Zahara with that question and I will get him to uh, answer that for us. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. I think I see a lot of uh, positive things happening. I'm seeing businesses working together, and we've seen that in our community uh, for a long, long time. But uh, even uh, with what's going on today, uh, everybody's trying to help each other out. I uh, see a lot of businesses moving on to online platforms, and, and the reality of the situation is in society today, uh, people are looking to do their shopping online from the comfort of their own homes. So I think if there's any positive coming from, from this, is that maybe it, it will push uh, all of us to, to look at alternative ways of uh, gathering business. And being on an online platform, it will expand horizons and maybe allow for a customer base outside of our traditional trading areas. Um, also, we see a lot of um, working together with the levels of government, uh, a lot of increased communications between people. So I think that's positive. And I think you're seeing a lot of more people staying at home and shopping at home. Um, and with what's going on in some of the cities with infections and that sort of thing, you might actually see uh, people staying close to their home to get their shopping done. And I think that'll be a positive to our business communities. Um, and I think with um, when, when Jasper National Park opens, I hope that our, our local clientele and our local residents will, will visit the park uh, and help support them as we move forward through this. Okay, Mayor Oglinski, I'll move over to you with the same question. Uh, what is working well for you in Yellowhead County and what kind of positives are you seeing in your business community at this time? And you're on, you're still muted there, Mayor Glinsky. There we go. Are you okay yep. now? Yes. Right. No, we're, uh, I, I want to put my hands out to the, the businesses that I've seen around. I think most of the businesses that are staying open, the essential services, are, are really doing very well in protecting the public as good as they possibly can and are adapting as the, the time goes by. You know, I've been to a number of businesses uh, in the Edson area and uh, I have to give uh, compliments to them because they are making it much safer for the uh, visiting public. And, uh, but if I look in the rural area around uh, Edson and I look at my own subdivision, I live in River Ridge Estates, I've seen the people going out walking a lot more than we've ever seen in the past and I think that uh, families are uniting and becoming a lot closer during this time, um, during the pandemic. And the people are spending more time together, but they're getting outside together and uh, enjoying the outdoors. And I think we're gonna see more of that. I'm hoping as time goes on and as we adjust and as the province adjusts, uh, example, the fire bans that we have presently in place, I'm hoping by the May long weekend that the province really takes a good look at this to maybe allow those fire bans outside of the municipalities of Edson and uh, Hinton and Jasper uh, so that the people uh, in rural uh, campgrounds and stuff like that can enjoy it. I think it's very important for people to get out and uh, you're seeing a lot more. I drove uh, through uh, Edson uh, 
two days ago, I was quite surprised to see how many people talking on the sidewalk, doing the social distancing that they have to do, but visiting. And that was so good to see. We didn't see that before. And if there's one thing that I hope that we get out of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic is uh, that friendliness to bring it back together, bring people closer together, bring families closer together. Thank you. Mayor Ireland, I'll call on you next. Thank you, Nancy. Um, like the, the other mayors, um, there are some silver linings in all of this. There's not a lot to be cheery about, but there are some significant factors to take note of and really express some appreciation. Um, sort of generally, the level of compliance with restrictions in our community has been phenomenal. We had businesses closing before orders came out because they recognized um, both the, the welfare of their staff and the welfare of the community and in fact the welfare of their guests was paramount. And so I, I'm really proud of the way our commercial community in particular responded initially. It's also noteworthy the way businesses in, in our community have found ways to adapt where they can. Not everyone can, but those, those who can show some Adaptivity have done that. Um, we have so much more takeout option available now in our restaurants than ever before. And, and kudos to them. They're, they're doing a great job. They're doing what's necessary. And hopefully we'll find additional ways to help them through this. But probably the, the most significant positive through all of this is the growing recognition of the interdependence of our community on tourism and on each other. And I, I've really been impressed um, with the growth of both the, the recognition of and the commitment to a collaborative effort to get our entire community through this ordeal. Um, it's nobody for them themselves. It's all for all of us together. I, I think our community more than any other time has recognized that we have one brand that is Jasper and we all benefit if we find ways to sustain that. And I, I think that everybody is, is cognizant of the fact that we will have to work together in a collaborative sense as we move forward. And I see nothing but positivity in that approach. So lots of, of silver lining in an otherwise very dark cloud. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. Mayor Michaels. Uh, thanks, Nancy. Uh, not a ton to add uh, being last in line for that question, but the one thing that really stood out um, apart from obviously the community spirit and, and people coming together, which is happening in every community, uh, is the transformation or the um, um, sort of context behind setting up a meeting. Before it was difficult in the sense of, okay, you know, the status quo was to meet in person. So we just kept it at a certain level. Now it is the status quo is to meet online, whether it's through Zoom or other platforms. So efficiency, collaboration is much easier now because we can get together with the business community like we are today in, 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 in a much easier fashion without uh, the need to say, well, let's get together in person. It's, it's okay now. So we have to tap in and, and I'm seeing more businesses, more uh, levels of government uh, using this approach in order to have more meetings, to get together and collaborate and do things. So that's been the positive in the sense that we have a new uh, certain standard now. Uh, we want to hear from you next week. We can easily do that via this at your convenience. You can see the video after. So uh, our culture has just shifted. Uh, I've said this before. It felt like we went from 2019 to 2040. We just skipped two generations or not two generations. We skipped two decades and this is the world we would have seen in 2040 we're experiencing now. So it's, it's taking advantage of it, uh, meeting more and reaching out to partners uh, and people who may not be uh, in your community. And this is what we're doing today, and I hope to see more, and uh, it's encouraging to see uh, the participation. Thanks. We have, thank you, Mayor Michaels. Um, we have some questions here. Our first one is from uh, Grand Cash Business, and it is for the mayors of Jasper and Hinton in regards to uh, support for tourism businesses. This particular business has been operating in BC where there has been funding for uh, tourism announced. And although the BC tourism industry is quite the, uh, twice the size of Alberta, tourism is a significant industry in Alberta. 
So Mayor My Michaels, instead of going last, we'll let you go first and to comment on this one. Well, thank you for, for that question. And uh, it's, it's, to be quite honest, this is, this is trying to quantify the 2020, you keep hearing is, is oh, it's a write-off now, they say, uh, not knowing how tourism is going to play out. Uh, I think the focus is 2021. How does our province and, and, and the municipalities involved create a plan to work together? Because before COVID, uh, there were changes that were made uh, uh, from a provincial standpoint when it, when it came to tourism. Uh, you know, we lost our funding, uh, coincidentally, uh, in Hinton for our visitor information center. So there were already changes before. Now, as fast as the plan has came and, and the focus is on the everyday economy, it seems, for March 14th, the province, we are behind when it comes to uh, tourism. Uh, so these are the things that we want to hear from you and, and we can collaborate. I, uh, if you send me your, your email, uh, I can get you connected with uh, Mr. Kovach here at the town of Hinton, our economic development officer, uh, and try to get that, uh, that information from the tourism industry in order to build a plan that will bring us some successes in 2021. Uh, so it, I, I know it's not much of an answer, but it's, it's being prepared uh, because businesses and tourism is obviously is taking an amazingly huge hit this year. And, and I'll pass it over to Richard if he has anything to add. Thank you, Marcel. And, and thank you. Is it uh, Gina? I think asked that question and thank you for that. Um, there are, I guess, different levels on which um, that question could be approached. Um, certainly from the perspective of the municipality of Jasper, just about any support we can imagine for our local businesses is support for a tourism business. We're, we're all tied into tourism. And so um, whatever we might be able to do as a municipality impacts a tourism business in one way or another. More generally speaking, um, there seems to be a growing recognition at um, the federal level in particular of the need to find additional supports for tourism generally. There have been some significant reports done, uh, um, most of them uh, particularly gloomy, but that's the reality. Um, something like 61,000 businesses uh, in the tourism sector might be at risk. Uh, just last week, our, our member of parliament um, asked a question that was answered by the, by the deputy minister, Christina Freeland, um, specific to Jasper, but she responded generally about um, a recognition for the need for the federal government to find additional supports for tourism. So your question was, what has been discussed? Well, nothing specific that I can, that I can point you to, but generally speaking, support for tourism is being discussed. It's recognized as an important need, particularly um, for those communities like Jasper that are almost entirely dependent on tourism. Um, at the provincial level, um, I know that, that uh, our local Tourism Jasper group is working with Travel Alberta, and I, I think I saw earlier that uh, somebody is online from there as well. Um, and so I, I know that they are too looking at options that might exist to support tourism businesses specifically. I'm happy to take note of your question. I'll pass it um, back up the, the chain, particularly at the provincial level and see what other specifics we can get um, answered for you and see where this might take us. But I can say that uh, we certainly recognize the need um, for additional support specific to tourism businesses. So thanks for that question. We have a number of comments here regarding businesses that are eligible to open on May 14th. Um, if there are going to be requirements for masks, gloves, hand sanitizing stations, et cetera, then we are all going to struggle if there are no supplies. Are any of the mayors can answer this question? Is there now we're going to be a suggested list of things to have in place op to open, to safely open? There, uh, if, is there any information available that you know of with regards to the relaunch strategy that will help uh, support businesses on the 14th if they wish to reopen? Um, Mayor Zahara, I'll pick, I'll, I'll pick on you and see if you know any information. 
<laughs> well, thanks, uh, Nancy. I actually had a phone call about this earlier today for one of our uh, local hair salons that was uh, concerned about the reopening and, and how they were going to deal with that. I think uh, that's one of the questions we'll have to ask the provincial government on. I know the Premier spoke about uh, getting mass supplies uh, for Albertans in general. Um, obviously, here locally, as Mayor Glinski pointed out, uh, we have Rocky, Big Rock, Rocky Mountain Distillery that's uh, producing hand sanitizer. Um, and we have some local businesses actually just donate some to the medical clinic and the food bank. Uh, but some of the things like masks and uh, and gloves, uh, of course, are going to be a concern as well. So I think that's one of the questions we're going to have to ask our MLA and, and the provincial government on uh, where businesses can get these supplies. They may not have uh, have the contacts in order to get them. Thank you. And, and in regards to that issue, uh, Mayor Michaels, there's a question directed directly to you. Um, Will you be easing up on the rules that are set in place which pertain to Hinton in particular, such as the every second till close? I'm not quite sure what that means, but I, um, with regards to the Hinton rules that are in place right now, will there be um, some lessening of those rules towards May 4th, 14th? Uh, th uh, thank you. Uh, I can't, I don't know the exact date, but uh, this falls under our local state of emergency and we are looking now with the province reopening that uh, our local state of emergency will come to an end. So these changes uh, are upcoming. Uh, everything changes so fast. Obviously Friday was huge news and people were uh, not expecting people to be in restaurants and 14 days uh, uh, later we'll have people, well now it's only 10 days. So the, the answer to your question, yes, there will be changes. The EOC is working on uh, communicating with all the businesses and, and the struggles that uh, are there because it, it is challenging to, to add layer upon layer, but safety was the number one priority. Uh, we had many complaints. Uh, people didn't like the, capa the capacity limits uh, and they wanted as many people uh, in, their, um, in their buildings as they wanted, but that wasn't the reality, especially not knowing how contagious and how um, uh, difficult this virus was. So uh, to answer to your question, I would suspect uh, something publicly in the coming days uh, about uh, the end of our local state of emergency and specifics uh, in working with businesses like yours uh, to um, facilitate uh, more, more access to people and, and having uh, the, all, all the lanes open with social distancing measures in place. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, it should be upcoming very shortly. Great, thank you. And and just for the record, that is a grocery store business that in mm -hmm. Hinton that asked that question. So uh, with regards to this issue still, the question came from another Hinton business. How will our local governments help to instill calm and confidence in our local communities to be out in the public, shopping, eating out, et cetera. Re restaurants especially will need assistance with building confidence. How can local governments help? And so Mayor Glinski, I'll turn that one over to you to maybe comment on how um, the county plans to uh, you know, instill confidence in people as we're able to move out into the public. Thank you, Nancy. The county is following as closely as possible with the uh, provincial regulations and even the question that was asked earlier as to what uh, safety measures some of these companies need to uh, follow. Um, when the announcement was made last week, uh, they did state that they would be coming up with uh, certain standards and uh, we are still waiting for those standards from the province and I believe they probably scrambled over the last few days putting together safety standards for different businesses. So as soon as we get those, uh, we will make them available on our webpage. But uh, we're encouraging businesses to follow the guidelines coming from uh, our health professionals here in the province. And uh, we do encourage businesses to open, but we know there's gonna be restrictions on how many people can be in and what they can do. And uh, we are asking that they follow the provincial guidelines and uh, that's the best we can do at this time because we're waiting every day and things are changing every day. So it's uh, it's not something I can say is going to happen today because it may change tomorrow morning. So we're just waiting to see what the province comes out with and then we will pass those on to our residents. Thank you and businesses. Thank you. Uh, our next question, I'm going to, I'm backtracking if the mayors are trying to follow. I'm all over the place as you probably gathered. Um, 
uh, it's regard into uh, landlord and tenants and rent decisions. We're uh, still awaiting in the province the uh, CECRA, which is the commercial rent agreement uh, that needs to be signed between the government of Alberta and the federal government with regards to lending to commercial uh, landlords. Is there any comment from any of the mayors regarding uh, this loan and is there's any uh, decision made on a clear government direction on commercial tenancies and commercial renters? Can I pick on somebody or would someone like to volunteer? Okay, Mayor Michaels. Uh, thank you. Really, this one is honestly, uh, I was researching this again prior to us meeting today. And this is where I think we want to hear from the businesses. Uh, this is a, a package, a C, I, I, I don't know how to enunciate the acronym. I don't know, is it CICRA or do they, or just C? -E yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, we uh, we want to know from the business perspective, does this fill your needs? So you have a landlord who can get 75% subsidy uh, if you own the building. And there's a, a, a list of criteria, obviously, uh, pertaining to this. Does, is this effective? Will this work uh, going through the month of June uh, to, uh, you know, su sustain some of the damages that were done financially uh, uh, in loss of a uh, loss of income? So this, I, I kind of, really want to hear from the businesses. Uh, does this program look effective? If not, what changes or what additions do you need uh, for CECRA uh, to work for you? Okay, so it's back in letting uh, Mayor Michaels know if you have any concerns about tenancy to let him know. Uh, Mayor Ireland, would you like to comment well on that issue? Uh, thank you, Nancy. It, it is, um, of course, a topic of great discussion in, in every community and wearing my other hat, um, it's, it's a topic of professional concern as well for clients that I advise. Um, one of the problems, of course, here is that the rules are not as clear as they need to be, but it's also possible for local government at this time to transmit uh, a message to other levels of government to help clarify those rules in a way that that works for everybody so initially when the program rolled out there seemed to be a requirement that it would only be applicable to commercial landlords who held a mortgage um, that has now softened so it no longer needs to be the case it's still though a voluntary program so far as i can tell so commercial landlords don't have to to accept it um, regardless but there are lots of issues it certainly impacts our community in a very big way um, particularly when we juxtapose that initiative against our own initiative uh, at a local government letter level to defer taxes, of course, because not every um, business is a direct taxpayer. Um, some will have triple net leases where they pay a share of property taxes, but others may pay um, just a global rent. So it, it really impacts every business in a unique way and we need some clarity. So if nothing else, um, we can continue to push for clarity from other levels of government. But if any of our local businesses see particular instances of uh, inequity or a need to address a, a different matter than has been addressed so far, uh, this forum is intended specifically for that. So as, as Mayor Michaels indicated, let us know what you need so that we can pass that along to other levels of government. Okay. Uh, we have a question for all mayors. As businesses move to more of a remote working environment, the amount of dead zones in our regional broadband capacity uh, is changing. How will the mayor support the development of accessible, reliable, affordable, high quality rural internet access, which will be crucial, critical for businesses? And I'm going to get uh, Mayor Glinsky to answer this question first, as most of our uh, people that don't have access to broadband are in the county. So I'll, I'll hand it over to you, sir. Thank you, Nancy. You know, I think a lot of people uh, have noticed recently if you're coming through Edson, uh, the large tower that is standing beside our uh, uh, county uh, building. This is just one of a number of towers that we have been building over the last few years. And these towers are for emergency services, but are also available to the internet providers to provide better services for the clients. We also this year 
part of our infrastructure program, we are looking at putting two second towers up in the Hinton area, one up at Brule and one up at Aspen Heights. These again are for emergency service, but are also available to uh, internet providers such as TELUS uh, to rent space off us to provide better services. This is what we're doing as a county. We are eventually going to be able to cover the whole county with a number of towers that are available to internet providers to provide the service to the residents of uh, Yellowhead. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Ireland, I'm gonna to go to you next because I'm a homeschooling mother with two children at home and uh, I'd love to hear, gonna put my own little Jasper spin on this and to hear uh, from you next, please. Specific to rural broadband? Yes. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure um, who would be experiencing that issue here. Um, I, I'm certainly happy to take particular issues and, and advance them. Um, I, I, I'm just not sure, um, even from a homeschooling um, perspective, Nancy, what that might mean, um, because I am, I am beyond those days myself. Okay. Um, but but if people can tell me what the challenges are, I, I'm most willing to to dig in a little deeper. But um, I would need some particulars and know who it is um, I should be buttonholing and what questions I should be asking. Okay, Mayor Zahara, would you like to comment on broadband access to broadband in the region? Sure. So Edson's fortunate. We have some of the highest internet speeds in rural Alberta with uh, Optic uh, in our community. So we're very well positioned from a from an internet standpoint. But uh, uh, certainly, I, I think for for our community, uh, being on the Elmwood Highway, it's always crazy. The drops in cell service along Highway 16, and and certainly um, a number of the rural residents around Edson have have really hard difficulties in, in gaining that broadband internet and I give kudos to Yellowhead County for seeing the vision and, and, and putting some infrastructure in place to support that and I think from, from our community we would certainly uh, be able to support Yellowhead County in any lobbying efforts uh, uh, with um, telecoms providers as well as the provincial government to uh, enhance broadband internet. The, the crazy thing about this, I was just talking about it this weekend with my wife, 20 years ago, we're talking about broadband internet and we're still talking about it today. Um, and uh, it's a serious issue, especially wow. with the technological advances that we're seeing. Um, and uh, I think our governments, uh, uh, higher levels of government really need to get on with it and, and actually get take it seriously because there's certainly lots of dead zones around rural Alberta. Thank you. Mayor Michaels? Yeah, I think uh, Jim answered that question, uh, you know, very well. Uh, this is more of a county issue. Hinton was part of the original pilot project uh, to get optic uh, here. Uh, our internet is great. I'd love for uh, the highway to be, as uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor Zahara mentioned, uh, between Edson and Hinton is not ideal, but the county has a plan. I'm, you know, happy to hear that Brule and Aspen Heights, uh, being just outside of Hinton. Uh, extra coverage will go there. Um, at the end of the day, I think it's progression and the county is way better placed today than they were uh, years ago. So um, I think that's moving along fairly well. Thank you. Our next question is from a Jasper business. Uh, so Mayor Ireland, I'll put this over to you. Jasper business is very dependent on summer traffic being our high season. Mm -hmm. Is there a push to get Whistler's campground up and running sooner than later? people may feel more comfortable traveling to tourist towns in their own RVs. Well, that is, that is probably a, a fair assumption that, that um, the traveling public is likely to be more comfortable in their own quarters. Um, but that said, um, the hope and the expectation is that Whistler Campground will be finished by the end of this season. I, I know that crews are still out there. It was slated to be offline um, for this summer, that is not going to change. Um, the biggest concern right now is to ensure that that contract is completed sometime this fall so that that is, is ready um, to welcome the visitors that we will so desperately need next year. But uh, there, there's no prospect that it's going to be available this year. Thank you. Um, there's a follow-up question here regarding the federal government has announced that funding to regional agencies like Western Economic Diversification, is that going to be funneled through Community Futures? And an answer to that business, yes. 
uh, that money will be. We'll be able to lend hopefully by the end of the week or early next week to businesses that are not eligible for federal programming. Um, so if that is you, you are to contact myself or Tim at the office and we're happy to talk to you about what the plans are for funding. Uh, another question for Hinton. Uh, Mayor Michaels, what is the reason to extend this SOL, which I assume is the local state of emergency, and when can we expect it to be released considering that we've had zero cases of COVID in Hinton and surrounding areas do not have the restrictions that we do? Uh, thank you, Nancy. Yeah, great question. Uh, it's one that I get uh, almost hourly uh, from people. Uh, first and foremost, when it was issued April 2nd, it, one of the main things that it does uh, that it did was it allowed the maximum amount of people you see in stores. The provincial government did not have anything in place that would restrict. So hypothetically, we have six uh, bigger stores in Hinton, like a Walmart, Safeway, um, a Friesen Brothers. They could have had what, 200 people in there. And then we have people on weekends from other communities that come shopping in Hinton. Although uh, that that gave us the the ability to control that, to issue fines, create fines, and it gave us flexibility in the sense that why are we not removing it? In case there's a spike or there's a jump, we are prepared to then implement and add things to it. So I know it's precautionary and it sounds unintuitive in a sense that it's it's it seems like it's fearful, but it's 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 not there to scare anyone, but it's to make sure that we are prepared. To, uh, to continue in the event, because we, we, are, we are not there. Things change very quickly. We are, we are, uh, in a, we're in a positive state now. Uh, the last two days in Alberta have been under 100 people, so that's good, 97 and 96. Uh, but it's only four or five days ago that the numbers were in the 250s, close to 300. So we don't know what's gonna be coming up. But as I uh, answered uh, earlier, um, we are looking at uh, getting rid of the soul at some point point in the upcoming future but I urge every single person our community and we have administrators who are who are listening to this uh, they're there to work with you contact the EOC and share uh, your concerns of, of what particulars are uh, of, of problem and they will work with you we uh, our, our goal is to uh, enable and to help businesses succeed while keeping the public safe so if there's something that's uh, bothersome, it doesn't mean it has to stay that way. Contact them, work with them, and we'll try to find a solution that uh, you know, finds a perfect balance of safety while uh, making you succeed and, 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 and not getting in the way of your successes from, uh, from a business perspective. Thanks. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to, uh, a lot of people are asking about uh, particulars about the Government of Alberta's relaunch strategy, and I just wanna stress to everybody that the information that you have available on the Government of Alberta websites is almost the exact same information that the mayors and myself have. And so the questions with regards to PPE and um, supply chain and those kinds of questions, we're not gonna, I'm not, and how the decisions were made on the relaunch strategy, I don't really think our mayors can answer those. So I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and ask a question uh, for each of the mayors and, uh, Will you be looking at a strategic approach within your municipality for developing broad guidelines and best practices for sectors? So will you be doing work in your municipality that supplements the relaunch strategy by the government of Alberta? For example, uh, hair salons. Will your municipality be looking at different things that uh, to go with particular sectors in terms of relaunch? So I will start with uh, Mayor Zahar. Thanks, Nancy, an excellent, uh, excellent question. Uh, for the town of Edson, we've been really following provincial protocols and look, looking at them to take the lead. Um, our ECC meets uh, a few times a week and we're, we're talking with local health officials and certainly supporting any efforts uh, that they uh, think need to be done within our community. Um, so we're right now, we're in a listening phase uh, from our business community. As I mentioned, I did talk to a hair salon earlier today and really using the common sense of physical distancing, um, restricting the amount of people coming into businesses. And that goes for any sector, right? Um, if you're a smaller shop, obviously you're going to want to restrict the amount of people that are inside your building. Um, and then uh, making sure that you're having hand sanitization stations and that sort of thing. 
Um, we're really taking a common sense approach here and, and following the directions of, of the provincial guidelines because uh, really they are the experts in this area when, when it comes to health emergencies and we'll support those efforts. Um, and we want to hear from if our business community does have questions uh, in, in particular areas, uh, please bring those questions uh, forward to us and we'll try to get the answers for you, whether that's something that the municipality can do or it's another level of government. Um, but I certainly would encourage all businesses uh, to take precautions, uh, making sure there's, and I know a lot of our local businesses have been doing this um, for the last number of weeks, uh, increased sanitization of common surfaces and uh, wearing gloves and that sort of thing. Uh, we need to continue those efforts. Um, here in Edson, we didn't have a state of local emergency, uh, but we really tried to stress the importance of following those protocols. Uh, the reality is we're not gonna get rid of COVID-19. This was never about uh, completely getting rid of it. It was about not overwhelming our healthcare system, and we're going to have to continue with those efforts for the months ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Glinski, I'm going to turn that question over to you. Will Yellowhead County be doing any uh, broad guidelines or best practices for different sectors in the county in partnership with the Government of Alberta relaunch? Thank you, Nancy. Uh, as a Kevin mentioned, uh, we're closely following the guidelines of the province of Alberta. And, uh, you know, we've initiated uh, similar guidelines, such as tax deadlines of October 15th. Uh, but we went a little bit further. We, we decided as a county that we needed to try to help the residents and the businesses of the area. And we reduced our tax base by 5% for both residential and businesses. We also thought, well, industry uh, does a lot of drilling in this area. And we've totally remove the uh, well drilling uh, tax from this area, hoping to stimulate more growth in, in businesses in the area. But it's very important that we follow the guidelines of the province as, as close as we can. But we are doing some things on our own, like our local county parks, we are opening them on June 1st, uh, but we are following the uh, no campfire rule put out by the province. And uh, those were self-contained camping. We did have an area of the county, for example, from Highway 22 East and north of Highway 16, which is out of the fire forestry uh, control zone. We uh, did last week uh, put a ban on fires there, but we also removed it today, going with the circumstances. We had eight inches of snow down there uh, last night, and we felt that was the ban needed. No, so we removed it today. We may put it back in the future, but uh, we are working very close, as Kevin mentioned, with the province following the guidelines, but we're doing some individual things. Anything that people want to know, please either contact the uh, Yellowhead County office or look on our webpage for information. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Michaels, uh, would you like to look at that question? Um, will you be developing any uh, broad guidelines or best practices for particular sectors in Hinton? Uh, thanks, Nancy. No broad uh, plan, but there will be an economic uh, recovery plan uh, from the town of Hinton. Now, uh, as I stressed before, uh, I'm, I'm very proud that our EOC team has been working with businesses in our community. Uh, it's, it's about really, uh, it's a form of lobbying and, and helping to comply. We're not here to, hey, you have to comply with uh, whether it's a guideline from AHS, it's how can we help you comply and how can we uh, take uh, what you're saying and uh, as somebody said this uh, earlier in this conversation, uh, things are changing every single day uh, and these guidelines are, are either softened up or, or, or not and that's through this dialogue. So I urge every single business in Hinton, if the town of Hinton has not reached out to you, reach out uh, to, to us and and, and let's build those guidelines or help you comply as much as you can. So I know it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a blanket answer, but it's, it's, it's about uh, influencing other levels of government to make sure that the compliance needed is reasonable, first and foremost, uh, and, and we're here and the EOC team is, is doing that. So um, uh, I continue to, uh, to urge people, please contact your EOC and, and, and find a solution together or, or help us uh, find one for you. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Thanks, Nancy. I, 
I almost feel a need for you to repeat the question for the fourth time, um, but but I think I can remember basically um, what you asked, and um, it, it's sort of both a, a no and a yes answer. Um, our position, our municipality and, and local government has taken the position consistent with what has been expressed by the other mayors. Uh, Mayor Glinski uh, started on this uh, many questions ago, and. Uh, Mayor Zahara and Mayor Michaels have both confirmed that in all cases, municipal government sees its role as supportive of direction and recommendation from Alberta Health Services. So this is first and foremost a public health emergency. We have all sorts of economic issues arising from that, but we don't plan to build a strategy that is different than the parameters laid out by the provincial government um, which will follow the recommendation of the, of the health professionals. But within that context, absolutely, our local goal is to construct a collaborative strategy um, within those parameters to allow our entire community and all sectors of it to take advantage of recovery opportunities. So we're not going to rebuild the model, but within that model, um, we are inviting, and, and we have, uh, I think it was probably three weeks ago, I proposed to council an economic recovery task force. Um, hopefully that will get final approval tomorrow. But the whole idea is, um, as I said in my opening comments, is to create another forum for the collaborative effort of all sectors in our community to develop a strategy that will work for our community and all of its sectors. So absolutely, yes, we hope to develop a clear strategy at the local level for how we respond to recovery without necessarily changing um, the terms. So the, the biggest issue we have when we look at what the province has so far rolled out in its three-stage approach is that non-essential travel is a stage three item. Um, and for a tourism dependent community, that is critical. So uh, while it, that strategy may work um, in Edmonton or Calgary or um, Red Deer, um, restaurants there, for example, may be able to survive on local traffic. But if we can't get visitors to our community, um, a lot of that is, is simply redundant. We, we can't take advantage of it. But within that context, we can certainly collaborate among ourselves and figure out a strategy that can best position us to take advantage of this rolling recovery. Thank you. Uh, we're, ha we're getting a, a lot of comments just for all the mayors on rent relief and rental issues between tenants and landlords. So just to be aware that that is, seems to be quite a large issue with our businesses in the region. Uh, we did have a question for me. Is there any assistance for applying for employee subsidies? Are you aware of how difficult it is with the employee wage subsidy? Yes, I am. I'm perfectly aware of how difficult that is to apply for. And for that particular business, you have my cell phone number and feel free to call me and we can talk about it quite a bit on whether that's the best way for you to go forward. Um, there is a follow-up question uh, from Mayor Oglinski. Um, does the Edson Tower reach the communities of Knighton Junction, Wildwood, and Evansburg, along with all the rural surrounding areas? That's with regards to the broadband that you were talking about. And does how far does that uh, tower that you were referring to reach? Does it reach into Knighton, Wildwood, and Evansburg? Thank you, Nancy, for that question. I, I can't uh, totally answer that. I know that we have a number of towers situated throughout the county. Um, what I was referring to earlier in my answer was that just last year we built the main tower here in Edson to uh, help the area around Edson. And this year, part of our strategic planning was to build the tower, uh, two towers in the Hinton area. Now we will continue to build towers uh, over the next few years, but we are setting those over on a long-term project because uh, a tower is about a million dollars to set up. So we can only put so many up a year. And uh, for that person who has asked that question as to uh, Evansburg in that area, if they would get a hold of uh, myself, send me a, a text message or contact the uh, 
Yellowhead office, I can give them specific uh, answers as to their specific areas, but I, offhand, I can't tell you what tower feeds those uh, exact communities. Thank you. Uh, we have a new question here from Air Ireland. If Jasper will potentially see a significant decline in bus traffic this summer, and the fact that Jasper has three directions of highways to access the park and the community, does it make sense to improve the awareness on the highways regarding the services and facilities in the town of Jasper? I will certainly take that question um, up with, with those who are directly involved in our tourism marketing. Um, yes, there will be a reduction in travel of all sorts, in, including buses. Um, it may be that, that uh, there could be some uh, grounds made for, for inc improved signage, but just for being the destination that it is, it, it, it seems unlikely um, that many buses are rolling by without recognizing that that's the turn. So I'm not quite sure the specifics of, of the question. Um, we are and have been for several years engaged in a new wayfinding project but realistically, it's unlikely that council is going to allocate further money for capital expenditures uh, of that sort right now. Although if, if there is a demonstrated need to improve the economic activity in the town by spending some money on, on signage, that certainly is, is a matter that is in council's discretion and that could change. Um, so I, I would need some further details. So if, that, if the person who asked that question um, wants to reach out to me directly, um, and we can further that discussion, I'd, I'd be very happy to do so. Okay, there you go. If that person could follow up with Mayor Ireland, that would be great. Now, I don't see any more questions in the queue. So to the businesses on the line, this is their last opportunity to write a question. I'm going to give you two seconds. And what I'm gonna do then is to get every um, mayor to talk a little bit for about maybe five to seven minutes about where we go next. What is your advice to the business communities? Where do you see economic recovery? And um, where, where do we go next as a community and as a region in the West Yellowhead for the businesses that you have on the line? So I will get, um, let's see, let's go backwards alphabetically. <laughs> Sorry, Mayor Zahara, you're up. Last on the ballot, first in your heart. That's my campaign slogan. Uh, thanks, Nancy. I think uh, one of the, the big things uh, that's really important for us to hear from you uh, as we're communicating with our MLA and MPs and ministers. Uh, we have uh, almost weekly conference calls with different ministers and, and hearing uh, the concerns on the ground uh, are really, really important. Um, I know there's been a lot of questions about rent subsidies today, and I think there's a lot of unknowns there at this point in time. Um, so I think, I think hearing that feedback, understanding where you are as businesses and how best to support you in the recovery efforts, Recovery is not going to happen just this year. This is going to be a long-term 2021-2022 uh, issue. That's what our council is focused on right now. Um, I mentioned, uh, I'm just going to run through some things that we're looking at as a community here in Edson. Uh, I think there, there's a couple really big strengths that we have in our region. One of those strengths uh, uh, is West Yellowhead Community Futures and the work that we do regionally. Um, reach out to them. Uh, Nancy works 24 seven, 365 days a week uh, and her team there. But it's really a great resource uh, to bounce questions off of um, and, and, and get some feedback, your local chamber of commerce as well. And really working with businesses within your communities and regionally uh, to support one another coming through this. Uh, before COVID started, uh, the town of Edson was looking at ways on how we can revitalize our downtown core, talking about things like temporarily shutting down Main Street on Sundays and having markets and events in our downtown core. We've been focusing a lot of our events in Centennial Park, but it's not really connected to uh, where most of our businesses are. So uh, we were already having those discussions. So I think coming out of this, we're going to be looking uh, really hard at what we can do to drive people into our downtown core. Um, 
I mentioned that uh, we, we found about $1.8 million worth of savings in our uh, budget this year for our 2020 budget. Um, we've instituted an emergency budget. Uh, that's a 10% reduction in operating costs this year uh, for the municipality. Quite significant. There's going to be some service level disruptions, but it's going to give us some financial flexibility uh, to deal with recovery uh, coming out of this. Uh, I mentioned that we're spending about $564,000 on uh, tax reductions this year, uh, both residential and non-residential. And we're gonna have about $1.3 million set aside uh, for recovery programs. Now, is that gonna be tax relief? Is that going to be uh, grant programs targeted at specific businesses coming out of this? Those are discussions council is going to have. Those are discussions we're going to have with the business community. And really important to hear from our business community on what they think is best. Um, is tax relief the option or is it better to have some sort of grant program in place? Or is there other things that uh, we can do to support our business community, whether that's advertising campaigns, um, looking at uh, online strategies? Uh, we really want to um, have that dialogue, um, have an open book, and try to figure out ways on how we can strengthen business within our community, not just now, but into the future. Um, and also, we've done things like extending the tax deadline. So for Edson, uh, the tax deadline has been extended to September 30th, so hopefully that will help with some cash flow. Uh, we also have um, instituted uh, attack or uh, utility deferral program. So there's no penalty is going to be applied until uh, August the 25th and any outstanding balances uh, individuals and businesses will have until the end of the year to pay those off. So um, those are some of the things that we have done. Uh, we're also looking at what uh, the provincial and the federal governments are doing uh, with their programs. We know that they've come up with a suite of things from the wage subsidy to rent supplements um, to uh, uh, interest-free loans. Uh, problem with loans, you have to pay those back. And if that business isn't there, it can really put you in a pickle. Um, so that's why we're thinking maybe a grant program might be something uh, that we might be able to do in our community moving forward and looking at ways on how we can attract new business uh, to our downtown core and into our community as well. So uh, I think this is going to be an ongoing discussion. There's so many unknowns right now because we really don't know what the long-term impacts are going to be. And we also don't know what are some of the additional programs that are going to be coming out uh, we know the federal government uh, seems to be stroking checks for every single thing out there right now. Uh, that money is going to have to be paid back eventually. Um, but we also don't know if there's going to be some additional supports for, for our business community. So uh, we're sort of taking a wait and see approach right now uh, and really uh, talking strategically on how best to support the business community coming up uh, throughout the summer, fall and into next year. Um, so I think uh, keeping that dialogue going, maybe having some more sessions like this will be really important uh, and, and wanting to hear those ideas from the, the business leadership in our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Michaels, I'll turn it over to you next. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, I think Kevin covered almost every single element there. Uh, a few things I, I do want to stress uh, upon is uh, taking what we've heard today and in debriefing and, and, and really trying to get a pulse of what you're, you're experiencing today. Uh, one of the big things, and Kevin alluded to it, was uh, the, there's a, this is going to be a long road. So we have a sh short-term plan. Okay, how did, how did the province, uh, the, uh, the feds and municipalities react to COVID uh, in the last six weeks? And there's a plan for, for right now. But what is that plan going to look like long term uh, in the month of August, September, not for business to just survive through the summer. This is going to be about surviving long term. So as, as Kevin said, we need to have more sessions like this. It's, it's really making sure that we don't miss a beat about what is affecting you as a, as a business owner uh, and communicating that to other levels of government. Because let's, let's be real. They all levels of government right now are being reactive to some extent. Uh, just, just as an example, it's not a business one, but uh, one day the, the province banned uh, off-highway vehicles, the next day they changed their mind. So there's a lot of these decisions that are happening. Uh, so it's important, as, uh, as it was said before, to continue having this dialogue and, and 
formalizing a plan that's not just going to make us survive through the summer, but what's going to make you as business owners survive in 2022, 2025, because this is, this is crippling to, a, to many businesses. So the plan right now was to stay afloat, but we don't need that plan uh, maybe anymore. In a sense, it's, it's about staying afloat long-term. It's, it's, we, we can't let any business sink in right now. If things don't change and we don't uh, react uh, better, we don't communicate what you need. Uh, some businesses will, will be hurt by this. So um, I, I look forward to doing this again, hopefully in a few weeks, uh, once we have a better uh, uh, picture of how this relaunch works, because a relaunch itself is going to merit a, a big conversation. There are going to be hiccups. There are going to be road bumps in the relaunch, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, we have to react quickly, not just, uh, you know, two, three weeks later, because that could be the end of uh, somebody's uh, livelihood because uh, m money is hemorrhaging throughout this province. Thanks. Thank you. Mayor Ireland? Thanks again, Nancy. Uh, Jasper, I suppose, is in a, a somewhat unique situation um, compared to our counterparts in the county in Hinton and in Edson. And so um, certainly being um, in a federal jurisdiction um, changes the dynamic for us a bit. Uh, we're also subject to, of course, the, the provincial rollout and the provincial laws. But so many of the questions today relate to um, initiatives coming from the federal government in terms of uh, commercial um, landlord and tenant um, legal issues and, and rent and so forth. Um, and so we have perhaps a bit of an advantage in that we have established um, lines of communication with the federal government already. Um, not necessarily the, the most relevant departments, but we have that access and we are on federal crown land. So that, that may help. As I said uh, in response to an earlier question, uh, we've had uh, great uh, cooperation from our member of parliament, uh, Gerald Soroka, who, who asked questions recently and, and at least got the attention of the deputy prime minister. And so we can continue to use that channel to help bring clarity to some of the questions that were asked today and, and questions that will no doubt arise in the future. I'm also really encouraged that I, I saw online um, right when we started, um, that James from Travel Alberta announced his his presence here. So I'm really glad that Travel Alberta was watching so we can continue discussions with them and, and figure out what can happen at the provincial level specifically related to support for tourism business because that is our our only industry here and, and we will need that moving forward. Um, as, as Mayor Michaels um, said and others, um, this is initially certainly about survival and we want our community and all of its sectors to survive but then we have to move from survival back towards something like thriving um, and that will take time uh, and we will have to continue to do this um, and uh, i think uh, all four mayors are certainly committed to that i know our community is committed to it um, so we will be there to assist I mentioned earlier the, the economic recovery task force that's just underway here. And, and part of that is that in Jasper, we recognize that unlike other industry towns, for example, our town itself is an integral part of the tourism product. And so one of the questions that we're asking um, in the collaborative approach from the economic task force is what specifically can the municipality do to assist our commercial sector take advantage of the recovery. And, and uh, we, are, we are most sincere about that. We know that we will play a role supporting businesses through all sorts of things that, that we do in our community and from the municipal organization. So we need that input. This is one opportunity. There will be many more opportunities and I, and I look forward to continuing that spirit of collaboration with our entire commercial sector. And, uh, so if we are close to concluding, I, I wanna thank you um, Nancy, this has been really well moderated, and I thank you for helping us have this opportunity to address our constituents. Most appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Glinski, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Nancy. Well, I believe this session has been very good. I'd like to thank you and all the other 
volunteers that helped put this together and my uh, three uh, neighboring uh, mayors for participating in this exercise. And as, as Mayor Island uh, said just a short while ago, was we need input from you folks. And I know there's a number of people out here that are probably not business community, but are listening in also. And, you know, we need to work with you folks and get feedback from you so that we can take it forward to the province and to the federal government. I ask that everybody out there, please pay attention to Alberta Health Services and what they are reporting daily and the best practices that they're reporting on. You know, we have to work together. We can get through this, we will get through it, but it's gonna take a while. It's not gonna be over this year. We're gonna be looking at the 2020 before we really start rolling again. And we have to all work together and together we're stronger. Individually, we're weak. Listen, there's been a lot of praise go out and, and we have to be thankful, especially to our healthcare professionals who are putting themselves on that front line, looking after the people that have contacted uh, this disease. And we have to thank our professionals, the police that are out there, the fire departments. But there are so many others that we, we constantly forget. And, and I think I wanna take this opportunity just to relate on some of those people. Uh, I talked earlier about our truckers. They're the people that are keeping this country together. The railroads, the agricultural workers that are producing the food for us. The efforts of the grocery personnel at the stores. They're putting themselves on the front line every day. The people at the drug stores. And thank God for those people in our food banks and all our communities that are serving so well. You know, there's a large group of people out there such as the power generation people and distribution people that are out there keeping our homes powered up. People looking after our water systems, our sanitation, people in oil production, keep us moving, our natural gas production and distribution, gasoline, diesel and refinery product. These people are all putting themselves on the front line to keep things flowing in our country. And again, the agriculture community, they're so important, especially this time of year when they're trying to get the crops in the ground the road and bridge maintenance people, the garbage collectors, the firefighters, bus and public transit, the military, repair people, furnace appliances, plumbers that are coming out to our house in our emergencies, and the pharmacy staff. There's so many people that we need to be thankful that have put themselves forward and are on front line, whether you're working at Napa or Patterson Supply, you have stayed open. Thank you. The people at Walmart, the people at uh, independent food stores here, the people at uh, in Hinton at the different stores mentioned earlier. Can't remember all the different places, but thank you because you're frontline people. You're keeping us going. All I want to stress is that we're in this together and we need to work together. We need to be cautious. Don't let your guard down over the next little while. Play it cautiously and we will get through this together. God bless. And I think that was a great way to end our session. Uh, before I hand it back to Louise, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions uh, here that came up through while the mayors were speaking. When is the program available for rent subsidy? Uh, there, there is no program for rent subsidy. It is a rent loan. Uh, that will be given to commercial tenants and it's expected to come out in mid-May. Uh, who makes the decision on what businesses can operate? Those decisions are made by the government of Alberta and you can, if you Google Alberta relaunch strategy, you will find the, uh, the businesses on when they, on what stage they can open. Uh, just a thought for all mayors, I can see reopening being very labor intensive for small business owners as they may not be able to bring back all staff right away and therefore working most hours themselves. Maybe each town could help support them by having town crews, students sweep sidewalks, wash windows, small cleanups on lots, etc. And then a comment about restaurants being hit extremely hard and when they are allowed to open, they will be at half capacity or less. Um, it talks about tax incentives by the municipalities to help them stay open 
uh, to be able to afford to open and stay open. And I think we've covered a lot of uh, the different tax opportunities and deferrals that the municipalities are covering today. So if there are no other comments from our uh, mayors, I will um, hand it over to Louise to wrap up. And thank you, Town of Edson, for the technological support today. It was great. I just wanted to finish with Dan. thanking you so much, Nancy. I knew you were the best moderator for trying to do this for our region. So thank you for that. I also want to make sure that um, you share your email and your phone information so that people can reach out to you if they do have further questions or direction needed. We would also love to get your feedback. If this was useful for you, would you like to have another one of these? Uh, what would you want to see differently? The chambers across the region have partnered with us to pull this together as well. So please reach out to your chambers, share your feedback with them and with your mayors. And um, I just wanted to thank you all so much for trying to do this. New technology, new times, and we're trying to support in any way that we can. Uh, before I end this, I am gonna ask Nancy if she could just share that with everybody. Uh, we are working remotely, most of the team. So um, there's one person in the office at a time. Your best bet to get a hold of us is to call 780-740-3409. I will return your call as soon as I possibly can. And I will probably get Tim to help me or direct you to Tim if he's better to help with you. Um, also, uh, if you go to our website, westyellowhead.albertacf.com, we have a COVID-19 recovery page. We are hoping by the end of the week to be able to have some funding opportunities for people that are not eligible through federal programming and uh, to be able to share that information with you as soon as possible. And we have a very active Facebook page. So just look for Community Futures West Yellowhead. Uh, we will try our best to help you. And if we can't answer your questions, we will find out someone who can. So thank you, Louise, for that. Oh, thank you. And with that, just a final reminder, this was recorded today. I saw at one point we had 72 participants in our meeting. Um, we will get that uh, out to you when we can, and we really need your feedback as to whether you would like to see another one of these in the future. And with that, I will thank you very much. Thanks again to Steve for coming in and supporting us to make this happen today, Town of Edson. And have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.